Good morning, MechWarriors. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of questions that I've had for some viewers. Um, a lot of times there are terms in MechWarrior Online that are used that people just don't get. I mean, they figure it out eventually, but why not explain it here? Uh, let's start with the first one, which is NASCAR. Um, a lot of people don't like the concept of NASCAR, but it happens anyway. So if you don't know what it is and someone says, let's do NASCAR, you could be confused. Let's take away one of those confusing aspects. NASCAR is uh, when the entire team circles around an object or area continuously with the other team doing the same circle in the same direction. So what happens is, uh, for example, HPG Manifold, where everyone is just circling around the outside of the top um, tier um, and chasing the slow mechs on the outside. Uh, what often happens in a NASCAR is the mediums and light mechs pull ahead and don't pay attention to their heavies and assaults that are slowly falling behind due to speed issues. Um, and the lights and our mediums catch up to the assaults in the back of the enemy mechs. Uh, this is the concept of NASCAR, but it often ends up um, causing your assaults and heavies to, well, to get pissed off. Um, counter NASCAR would be for the entire team to simply stop and form a firing line so that as the other team comes around in the NASCAR um, they are facing a fully ready firing line that will engage them and take them out. Uh, counter NASCAR often works if you can get your team to do it. Um, coordinating over audio is one of the best ways especially if you show confidence and you have people who want to play with you. Best way to do this, of course, is to play in teams, but even in quick play, um, often players are looking for someone to lead the pack as long as that leadership makes sense. Um, you're always going to get the occasional straggler that will do the negative comment on anything you say, but they tend to go off on their own and don't last long anyway. Uh, that covers NASCAR. Our second topic covers uh, my limited understanding of uh, picking a mech and learning how to play better at it. Um, a lot of times people will choose a mech because they like the look of it or they like the missile concept or the laser concept and then they get into game and find out it overheats or everyone's yelling at them because they've got LRM 100 and nothing else or whatever. First and foremost, and I'll say this as clear as I can, first and foremost, play the mech you want to play. This is a game. Don't worry about the other guys. Um, it is important to want to play the mech you're playing and not get stuck in a pattern or a cycle or a pick this or you're a noob kind of cycle. That said, um, what I like to do for myself is I will go through the stats of a mech. So for example, if you're going to go and look at a mech, uh, let's just take a look at this one. You can you get these same stats in the store by the way, but we're going to look at it from the mech lab per perspective here. Um, this mech here has quirks and you can see down here there are mech stats. If you click this little icon in the bottom corner, it brings up the stats for the mech. Okay. In here you will see that there are enhancements. These are quirks for better or lack of a better term well that's actually what they're called anyway you can see that it has MRM quirks it has mostly missile quirks it has some heat quirks um, base armor and so on and so forth so by looking at this you can see what this model this specific version the HP HBK 4J has as quirks um, so it is it is meant to lean towards being uh, a missile carrying um, medium mech. In this case it does have the nodes for SRMs and lasers as well. Uh, the laser duration is also minus 25 percent so that means your lasers will shoot for less time, better for hit and runs. This is the kind of stuff you look at, the enhancements here. Now if you're going to look at a clan mech for example uh, you will notice that uh, the enhancements not quite the same. They have them. There's not as many of them. 
clans don't have as many quirks as Inner Sphere Max. Um, that was to counterbalance their extra range and technology levels that uh, Piranha decided to do years ago. Um, it works, I guess. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. But this is where you look at your mech. Now, if you're going to look at the store and see where that is in the store, you're saying, I don't own the mech yet, how can I look at that? Uh, let's just take any old battle mech here. So we'll take a Centurion, for example. You see the enhancements pop up on the right side there. So if I look at this one, enhancements, ballistic cooldown, minus 10, ballistic velocity, plus 10. You can also click it and view in mech lab. What that does is it gives you its basic loadout with its basic um, setup that you're going to get if you buy the mech. But the stats and enhancements are still here. Okay. Um, that is one way to look at the basics of a mech. Now, once you have determined that you like this mech that has laser enhancements or missile enhancements or what have you, what I like to do is look at reviews. Um, I've bought mechs before or within with Seabills and such, um, thinking, yeah, the quirks look good, the mech looks good, and it just didn't play well. What I like to do is go over to two sites. One is Smurfy's Mech Lab, uh, Smurfy, mwo.smurfy.net.de. And in here, you can choose and lay out the mech with different weapon spreads that you seem to like. Um, so if you saw that it had single heat sinks, you can make it a double heat sink mech. If you saw it had medium lasers, you can change them out for medium pulse lasers. Play in here instead of in the game. Um, so you're not spending C bills, not liking it, ripping weapons out and putting new ones in. Um, you can do any one of the mechs here. Um, so it's got all the mechs laid out. Um, I cannot, don't quote me on this, but I believe it is still up to date to what the game is at. And it should be okay. These are all base layouts. So if you load them up, it'll show you the base layout of that mech. And then you can play with it from there. Rip stuff out, put stuff in check out tonnage, check out speeds, change from armor, heat sinks, guidance, and so forth. The other site I'd like to look at is Mechspex. Uh, Mechspex has a general discussion on mechs. You can use a search option up here and search for whatever mechs you're playing with uh, and or just choose from this list down here simply. Uh, and you can see builds for these mechs and reviews. So that's mechspecs.com. I find this extremely helpful. That covers uh, picking a mech and um, well it doesn't really cover learning to play with it so we'll cover that in the next video. And now we're going to cover how to play a mech you have chosen. So in this case I have chosen the Vapor Eagle a medium 55 ton mech. I have laid it out as such with a bunch of meat pulse lasers and heat sinks. I have chosen some skills. We will cover skills later. And now I want to see like how does this thing play? Well, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, one, again, you can read the reviews on Maxpex. Like I said, that does help you get an idea of how this plays. You will note that when you get a mech, you do not have any skills unlocked. The mech will play rougher hotter, shorter ranged, etc, etc, without skills on it. So do not be frustrated when you first get a mech because as you deploy your skills more actively, you get more skills to put into the mech as you play, it comes into itself. But the first thing I like to do when I get a new mech is to see how it reacts in the field. And the testing grounds is the way to do that. So let's just choose River City here as an example. We're going to load up River City Testing Grounds. Now in Testing Grounds, the, there's mechs to choose from to shoot at around the city. You can see how the mech moves. You can see how it fires. You can see the effects in this map. You can also test in every map if you wanted to to see what it's like in uh, um, Frozen City with the cooler environment or um, I'll pick another map, the hot maps, uh, Caustic, and see how that works in there. Uh, so you know how it works overall with the heat and everything. So here we are, just like it would be in the game. You've got your weapons configuration done. Okay, and that also, by the way, is your control key, or so your arrow keys and your control keys. So you move your arrow keys left and right to get your thing, your uh, 
your selector over that weapon group. So I'm over weapon group 2 right now. If I wanted to add the first weapon to weapon group 2, I would hit the right control key. That would ha highlight it. Or if I wanted to go to the second one, I'd highlight it. If I want to chain fire that group, it's the backspace key. And that puts it like this. So if I fire the group 2, if I hold the group 2 fire button down, it'll chain fire those instead of firing them all together. Um, all of this can be covered in the training as well. Uh, I strongly suggest doing the training grounds. But let's take a look at how this mech reacts in the field. So we don't have any jump jets on this, so we can't jump. Um, but we can move around. We can see how this how it maneuvers. This is a fully skilled mech, so you can see how smooth it does move. Uh, I'm just going to go over here where I know there's a target, so we can test weapon fire. So this is one way to test out your weapons and see how they react in combat. Target so there's a poor little uh, Locust LCT-1E. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire our two groups. Our left group and our right group. Very effective against the light mech, dead center. Enemy mechs do not stand still. This is the thing to look at. This is one way to test out your weapon systems. To use your zooms to check out uh, your arm twist, your f twist speeds, and if you have jump jets, your jumps. It's also a good way to learn the maps. So for example, um, here's the citadel over here. This is where most of the fighting in this map takes place. It tends to go around the citadel. And to cover back to a previous topic of NASCAR, what often happens is one team will start somewhere over here and come in across this ground here and might come down this side notice how I'm going around the Citadel. So everyone would be going, if you were doing a NASCAR, which is not always the best thing to do, a lot of combat will happen right about here. The enemy will meet you right here. You learn this as you go along. There's also the platform you can get in between. So if you know that there's an enemy on the other side, you can come up in here and take some pot shots at them over here. Now you can also test out heat in this environment too. Again, how this mech plays. So, if I go, I hit 30% heat and it dissipates pretty fast. If, however, I hit Alpha Strike, it goes to 35%. That's Ghost Heat. Um, Ghost Heat was put in the game so that people didn't put 9 ERPPCs on one mech, pull the trigger, overheat, and vaporize whatever's in front of them. Um, or uh, a Locust running around with Ultra AC-20, uh, I don't know, that's a bad example, but in any case, that's why it was put in there. Uh, in any case, you can see with this mech, even on an Alpha Strike, it runs pretty efficient, and if I hold those buttons down, I get two, three, and four before I spike. So I know this, if I'm in trouble and I'm running, I can do four Alpha Strikes before anything happens. Uh, the other way to learn how to play a mech is simply to play the mech. Once you have read the, the uh, reviews, set up your mech the way you want to, tested it out in testing grounds, the only other step is to actually bring it into combat. Do not be disappointed in how a mech plays in the beginning. As I said, skills are important, and we will cover that in the next topic. And now we're going on to the topic of skills. Um, skills, uh, the question asked was how to earn skill points, so which skills to use. I can go over that partially, and I will go over what I know. Now, I am no pro at this game. I have played it for years. I am okay. Um, I can get into Tier 2, although as you can see, I'm in Tier 3 right now. Um, and this is after the PSR reset. Um, I dropped down purposefully into tier 3 honestly because I found tier 2 was just too competitive and I don't play this game full time even though I'm doing YouTube videos I have a job um, I simply play it for fun and I don't want the hassle of being called a noob once in a while or being on a team that when people lose someone yells out loser and other expletives so keep in mind that I am no pro at this. I can show you where the skill trees are and how to earn them. You can do research on your own to figure out which ones are the best. I strongly recommend uh, two 
at least two YouTubers. I watch a number of them. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Baradul and TTB here. Uh, both of them have amazing builds, amazing videos, and uh, have helped out a lot in my gameplay. I've often used some of the builds that they've played to test out, um, and uh, they've been a lot of fun and a lot, a lot of learning. Um, so let's get into it on skills. So first of all, when you get a mech, this is a mech that I got recently and I barely have any skills on it, so it's a good one to use as an example. All right. You can notice that the quirks on this one, again, as previously mentioned, we look at the enhancements. We have a UAC jam chance of minus 20, but you know what? I decided I didn't want to do the UAC on this one. I could. I might. I might change it up. I wanted to try it with light BPCs, and it was fun to do it this way. However, let's take a look at the skill sets here. So as you can see, most of these skills, all of these skills practically, are unopened. When you go into a game, win or lose, you ge you generally start building up. If you lose, you're building up GSP, GXP, sorry. And when you win, you are getting XP. So when you want to, you have a maximum of 91 skill points per mech. All right. If you want to unlock a new skill, so I want to let's say. The next one I want to get, let's say, is cooldown one. All right, you can read in the bottom right corner reduces cooldown duration of all ballistic energy and missile weapons. So, well, I have energy on here, so I want to, let's say, get cooldown one. Now, I don't know if I have any skill points at this point, but this is how you would do it. So, I've won a game, let's say. I know I have some skill points to play. I click on it. I have to buy one. It's red. You can add SP. And in here, you'll have two options, mech experience points or general experience points. General experience points accumulate uh, win or lose. Uh, and when you get to 800, you can get one point. Mech experience points are generally given to you when you win. As you can see here, I haven't played this mech much, so I don't have many, I don't have any mech experience points to spend right now. But I do have a general experience point or two to spend. So let's say I'm going to go like this. Oh, OK, look at that. I have two. Notice it also costs C bills and GXP. OK, so I'm using 1600 on my 1700 GXP down here. If you don't have the C bills that you accumulate also from winning and losing and from doing the testing grounds, you're not going to be able to unlock nodes for skill points. So now I have two skill points allocated. I can hit OK, say yes. Notice how this is now white. I can apply that skill. The next skill point I just, and I have available one still because I unlocked two instead of one. I'm going to go for range and apply it. I now have available zero, available zero. I have six of 91 unlocked on this mech. So now that you know how to apply uh, skill points and where to get them from, what do you put on? Well. In my opinion, and people will disagree with this, it's personal preference. How do you intend to play this mech? This is a Vulcan. It's not a heavy mech. It's not an assault mech. It's relatively fast. It jumps. It has ranged weapons. So what does that mean to me? It means I want mobility. It means I want range. And because I'm using PPC energy weapons, well, PPC, late PPCs aren't that high on heat, but still, I want to have it run a little cooler. So in here, I would be looking for the range, the cooling, um, anything that affects my PPCs, so heat gens. I would not be looking at any of the high explosive. As you can see, anytime you mouse over something, it comes up with what it means at the bottom right corner. So it increases critical, critical damage if a missile crits. I don't have missiles. Why would I choose that node? Survival, this is your tankiness, um, how tough the mech is going to be. You can put a few points in here if you really want to. Uh, in the beginning, it's probably not a bad idea. I choose not to. I prefer going into mobility. So what this does is it gives you stuff like acceleration, uh, the twist of its torso, the speed of its torso. And if you drill far enough down, it actually increases your mech's top speed, which can be helpful too. Jump jets, 
give or take. Some people use them. I don't. I, I, I mean, I do use jump jets. I don't use the skills in here. This, again, uh, reduces the amount of heat generated. It increases your vectoring percentage, increases your distance. So if you're really into like high jumps, speedy jumps, don't want to add extra heat to your mech, put some points in here. But remember, if you're putting points in here, you're taking it away from other nodes. Operations can be very important too uh, for your cool runs, for your hill climbing. Uh, hill climb is the reduces the acceleration rate of slowdown when navigating slopes. So it's more important for this on a heavier and assault mech uh, because if you hit a bump or a speed up going up a hill, you'll notice that the mech speed will reduce because it's a heavier mech. It's trying to push itself up the hill. The lights and mediums tend to just go over them, and especially with jump jets, it's not really a requirement. If you want, if you're running hot though, going down, um, I would go down like either this side to cool run or this side to cool run, and don't go any further. Sensors, this is great if you're using um, missiles or if you're going to be doing uh, peaking a lot on, let's say, alpine peaks, for example. Um, you want to reduce uh, the time that you're trackable. Um, you want to maybe keep a target locked so that your friends can shoot missiles at it. Depends on, again, the use of your mech. In my layout, I am doing my own hit and runs with the PPCs. This did not come into play at all. It won't come into play at all. Auxiliary. This is where your um, consumables get enhanced. Uh, I tend to like having double cool shots. Some people prefer UAVs, some people prefer uh, airstrikes or um, uh, artillery. This is where you would unlock extra stuff from there. So when you start a mech out, uh, you'll notice under loadout, under consumables, this is where you put all that in. You have one slot. Okay, If you want to unlock the other slots in the skill tree, that's where you unlock them. These are the options you can have to put in here. And we'll cover consumables, artillery strikes, UAVs, and airstrikes in the next video. And now we'll take a look at airstrikes. So I have equipped an airstrike on this mech now, and as you can see in the top right corner there's an aircraft and there's a slowly sliding timer. That's when you start a game, the airstrike is counting down to when it's available. Everyone has the same countdown, so if I trigger an airstrike, it will airstrike become unavailable. Online. It is now available, so if someone had triggered it right now, that countdown would start again. Um, I'm going to show you know, the difference between airstrike and an artillery strike. An airstrike is a strafe, and artillery strike is an area. So we'll do an area, an artillery, an airstrike right now. Airstrike activated. over here, and it goes to where your cursor is pointing. Uh, here comes the aircraft, and they came in and did strafe. So what you would want to do is you want to see a group of mechs in an area, call an airstrike down on them. It will give a red smoke, so they do give some warning, but. If they don't, if they can't get out of the way, you can place it behind them. You can place it on a structure above them. So, for example, if there's mechs all around this platform here, I could place it here. The red smoke would appear in the air. It would strike down on them. And we're back with artillery strikes. As you can see, I swapped out the airstrike for an artillery strike, and it is cycling to availability. Um, once it comes up, we will do an artillery strike, and you'll see the difference. Uh, again, it does the red smoke. This does the artillery strike did. And, or sorry, as the airstrike did, um, and it cycles with the rest of the people who have the same Artillery item too. Strike. It is oh, now available, so again, if someone was going to use it right now, it would cycle again. It would not be available for me to use. Artillery strike. You're going to activate Activated. it right there, again. You're not going to see aircraft this time. You see red smoke, and when it comes in, it covers an area around it. So this whole area here would be covered in explosions and damage anything in an area of effect. Now we're going on to UAVs. Okay, now on to UAVs. As you can see, the icon on the right side has changed to a UAV. Uh, UAVs also have a cycle on them. Uh, the UAV is used to show you uh, information, eyes and ears in the sky. Uh, they can be shot down by enemies, um, mostly uh, using energy weapons. You can use ballistics, but they're not as accurate, and don't even try it with LBXs. Or, um, so what do you use a UAV for? As you can see here, I'm standing beside a bridge right now. This is just an example, but normally you would want to do it over a hill or uh, beside structure of some sort. You want to know what's on the other side. Uh, in this case, if you look at my mini-map down here at the bottom, uh, you can see I'm sitting in the middle of 
F6, G6, F7, G7, and there's no enemies around. We're going to launch a UAV. UAV activated. Oh, look at that. It picked up an enemy on my right side. Well, right side's blocked because of this. That's why I didn't see him. Target but I can talk and target him. What does that do? First of all, I know they're there. I know they're on the other side of that wall. I can react. I can go in and kill. If there's multiple red, I can back away. It gives me a chance to do something. What it also does is it gives your allies a chance to lock those targets with missiles, with ATMs, whatever. Um, the UAV will only last for so long. So right now you can see uh, if I can get an angle on it. My UAV is way up in the sky. Okay, I can't even get an angle on it from here anyway. So it's, it's way up there, trust me. <laughs> but it's given me information on enemy targets in this area. So I can now come in, decide what I want to do, and this poor little locust. And take them out. Notice the UAV is now gone. It has a certain duration. Uh, you can increase this duration with skills. If you look in the skill notes, that's where you can do that. Lastly, I want to talk about um, team cohesion. Uh, sticking with your group, how to follow them, how to play with the team. You're playing with, uh, more often than not, an ungrouped team. That would be a team of uh, quick play players, individuals who have grouped together to fight against 12 other individuals. There are groups in there, a uh, limited amount, four players max in a group uh, since the new PSR reset. Um, but one thing to be very familiar with is where your allies are and of course where your enemies are. Uh, but sticking with the group is important, uh, otherwise you become a singled out target and you end up watching the rest of the match from spectator view because they take you up really fast. The best way to do that is to be aware of your mini-map. You can see the mini-map in the bottom of the middle of the screen here. I have no targets on it, I have no allies because I'm in testing grounds. But this map is very important. It gives you an idea of where you are and what's around you. Um, then there's the battle grid. Um, it does replace your view when you open it, which the default key is a B, I believe. You bring it up, it gives you an even larger view of the mini-map. This gives you the overall map area. Uh, if there's fights going on in other areas, you can see stragglers in your group that have gone up elsewhere. If help is called, uh, you'll see a flashing uh, icon around that group, that person or group. Um, orders can be given from here if you feel inclined to take command of the company or Lentz. Uh, I generally not try not to because it, I would rather just do it over audio. Uh, so. I tend to use the minimap and once in a while just to get my bearings I'll just open this quickly, get a view and close it again. Let's take a look at what this would look like enlarged with a group. So here's a uh, picture I just grabbed off the internet of the minimap enlarged so it's a little granular, I apologize for that. But as you can see the player is the yellow arrow with facing forward, his team is off to his left and he's got one mech in front of him. Um, this would be a typical, I would have to say this is probably a typical NASCAR situation where the team appears to be rotating around the center of whatever this area is here um, in this map uh, and the player is moving in this direction currently. Um, he is a little bit of a straggler, he does have allies around him for support if necessary, but if I was playing this player I would turn left inwards and start coming across D4 towards C6 to maintain group cohesion, lance in formation. You do get points actually, by the way, for your lance being in formation um, and sticking with the group. Uh, especially if you're an assault or a heavy, you don't want to fall behind. And especially if this is a NASCAR situation, this is where the lights from the enemy would be coming around this way, coming up from behind, and you'd have to turn and face them or just die outright. And most likely will die anyway because you're being left behind by your group. That um, covers what I can about group cohesion outside of game. Uh, in the next couple of videos I will try to um, mention some of these aspects that I've talked about while I'm playing. I apologize if I miss one or two. I do get a little hyper focused while playing. I hope this has uh, been helpful uh, informational at least um, and I hope you enjoy MechWarrior online. Uh, stay tuned for some game episodes uh, I'll be putting out and uh, thank you and please subscribe.